Hello, I'm Bernard Rieke, and together with my colleague Daniel Cielasco, we'd like to discuss some ideas on how we might be able to improve the affordance of embodied locomotion interfaces in virtual reality. So basically, how might we be able to help people figure out how to move through virtual reality if they are confronted with a new interface, especially if they don't really want to read the manual or listen to instructions? Before doing so, I'd like to talk briefly about my own background and how I got interested in this topic. So I work at Sam Fraser University in beautiful British Columbia in Vancouver in Canada, and I lead the iSpace lab there. So how can we really move through virtual reality, ideally providing us with this as simple as intuitive interface as if we would just walk through our natural environment. I mean, there's a lot of amazing interfaces out there, but most of the ones that work really well are not exactly in everybody's budget or uh, won't really fit in most people's living rooms. So is there a way we can simplify this? So really come up with ways to design effective VR locomotion interfaces without having much of a budget at all? Could we do this by even reducing disorientation and motion sickness and ideally even freeing up our hands so we can interact and communicate just like we would in a, a real environment? In pursuing this, I got really interested in these kind of embodied uh, human joystick-like leaning-based interfaces, where the idea is really you provide yourself with your own motion cueing, so you don't need any external actuation or motion platforms by simply leaning in the direction you really want to go. And we tried all kinds of different versions of this. Uh, you can do it uh, while standing, but seated tends to be a bit safer and more comfortable. Here are some examples for ground-based locomotion. We also recently tried this for flying. And here's an example where we compared four different locomotion interfaces. And what you could see is basically if you compare the leaning-based interface, the Navi chair and Navi board, to the standard controller, the motion sickness really goes way down, performance improves, and even reaches the level of physical walking, which was really exciting to us. However, there can be some challenges if people don't really know how to do this in the first place. So in the lab, we can tell them how to do this, but what if uh, people just want to figure it out uh, by themselves? So especially if they don't really want to read the manual, listen to instructions, and this seems a bit like a deja vu. So we've seen this for gestural and natural user interfaces, like the leap motion. In principle, you could do anything with gestures, but unless you know which gestures actually make sense, it's really hard to figure out what to do. So here's some of the challenges. If you don't really have a clear affordance, if there's no physical interface, it's really hard to understand quickly and easily what you actually can do or what you should be doing. Even more so if there's no constraints. So in a way, if anything's possible, how do you know what you should do, what you could do, what actually makes sense? And what also plays a role here is really our expectations. So we're so used to sitting quietly in movie theaters when playing a game, when watching uh, anything really, uh, that we kind of expect to be seated, to be couch potato, to either not uh, interact at all, or if anything, maybe use your hands or fingers at most. So we really have a, pr a prime expectation of no physical motion. And we realize that. For example, if you put people on a swivel chair with that mounted display on and ask them, okay, now rotate, they look for the controller and they don't really realize, oh, I could just physically rotate. Once they try it out, they realize like, oh yeah, okay, that's easy, I can do that. So how can we go about designing better interfaces? So here's some tentative design guidelines. First of all, if you can create an interface that's explorable, that you can discover, it's so much easier. That's one of the reasons why we uh, like using these flexible seatings, because just by sitting on it, you almost accidentally move a little bit about. And if you have a closed low latency feedback loop, then you immediately realize like, oh, okay, that's how I move forward. Oh, then I can go sideways. So it's relatively simple and explorable. If you can use uh, constraints and create a clear physical affordance, that can also be super useful, especially until we really have a new vocabulary of virtual learned affordances. For example, nobody, really uh, knew what swiping and pinching was 15 years ago. Now it seems straightforward, but this had to be learned and established. Improving input mappings can really be useful. There's various uh, options there that we could use. And 
Finally, also utilizing metaphors. So if people understand, oh, that's just like using a desktop, that's just like surfing, it's just like flying a bird, then they immediately start flapping their arms as if they were wings. So this can really help to communicate. And if all that fails, sometimes the easiest is really to not tell, not explain, not let them read instruction manuals, but really show, demonstrate directly in person through a video. And then often after a few seconds, they already get an idea of what is possible and what to do. Okay, so here are some of our ideas. We'd love to hear your feedback on these. Here's ways to uh, connect with us. Thanks so much.